My name is Jamie Scott and uh, farm here uh, on the family farm with my uh, father Jim um, at Pearson, Indiana. 100% yeah, no-till and 100% uh, cover crop on all our acres. Also have a side business where we uh, help others get cover crops on their farm. Uh, we flew on 30,000 acres last year and probably touched about 60,000 acres total of trying to get those guys cover crops. Like I said, using cover crops and no-till on everything here, um, you know, we feel that that's the sustainable way to do things. Um, hold nutrients on our ground. We've got a hundred and some lakes in this county that uh, we all feel like we should be part of protecting. Um, we've got uh, the Tippecanoe River here, which is uh, one of the most uh, diverse uh, rivers in the nation. There's some uh, endangered mussels that are still in there that aren't in other places. And you know, we need to be able to farm and still have uh, you know environmental issues in mind too. Um, using the cover crops and no-till to uh, sequester carbon um, and uh, build soil health up. Uh, been in uh, continuous cover crops for the last eight years on every acre. Before that was kind of just a few acres here and there trying to figure out what to use and, and when to use it. Um, but by those eight years we've seen a real improvement in the plant health um, the amount of nutrients that we have to apply, uh, I think we were losing quite a bit of nutrients before. Uh, we're now we're making some of our own and um, scavenging them. Um, but plant health is, is really a big, big part of it to us. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Tom Nelson uh, from uh, the Central Michigan area. This is my wife Lori. And uh, she and I farm uh, here uh, a crop farm operation, organic crop farm operation, and uh, comprises about 700 acres of crops. We've been organic since 1996. I'll give you uh, our crop uh, menu. It includes corn, uh, wheat. We do spelt occasionally, depending on the market. We grow edible beans, navy beans, for the last couple of years. We grow for Gerber, we grow uh, green beans and peas for Gerber baby food. We have rolling land, not the best of land. Uh, probably what got us into organics uh, more than anything else was tired of smelling the chemicals that I uh, was using for the 25 years before I farmed organically and the marketing opportunities. Uh, they're very, very interesting uh, opportunities uh, to feed uh, people uh, that are rather discerning in their diet, and uh, we're happy to be part of that. We do use cover crops here. Uh, we use uh, clover cover crops after wheat, and we use uh, oat cover crop after soybean. It's uh, been pretty successful. We feel that doing this, uh, well, certainly contributes to a lot of nitrogen and organic matter to our soil. Uh, increases the uh, friability, the tilt uh, of the soil, and um, it certainly keeps our hills from washing down into our valleys a bit, which is part of the game. We have noticed uh, over the years that uh, our snow drifts aren't as, as deep as they used to be. Um, it seems we get in the, in the field earlier in the spring, uh, depending on the rains, uh, more extreme weather events, I would say. Of course, memory's kind of hard to really trust. I'm not sure if it's me putting a, a label on something that otherwise would be really not significant, really. But to me, it seems that we are having stronger uh, rainstorm events, especially this last August. We had about a half a year's rain in, in about two weeks. We picked up nine and a half inches of rain. Uh, before that, we had about four weeks of exceedingly dry weather. Makes you wonder, uh, makes you worry. To increase the carbon content of the ground uh, through organic methods and through cover crop practices and through, to the extent you can, reducing tillage, Hey, they're all pluses. They're all things that we should do, uh, both financially for our own benefit and the benefit of, uh, of people that will follow us. I'm Henry Miller of Constantine, Michigan. I, along with my son, are farming approximately 2,000 acres. 
to do a fairly extensive uh, rotation of crops using uh, uh, growing seed corn, soybeans, wheat, and uh, uh, edible uh, green beans, as well as a whole series of cover crops. We've been incorporating ryegrass on a good portion of the acres, also some elseed radish and uh, Austrian winter peas, as well as uh, the old standbys of rye, uh, cereal rye, and uh, when that's not readily available, we have used wheat as, as a cover crop. Uh, we intend every year to do a cover 100% of our acres in, with cover of one form or another. We irrigate all of our uh, crops, and that is also even uh, includes sometimes irrigating cover crops uh, to establish stand. Uh, this fall here, uh, last week we actually uh, had ryegrass blown on, and presently I'm uh, irrigating to to uh, incorporate uh, to get that to germinate. We try to limit the to their necessity in terms of the amount of nitrogen that we apply on our uh, uh, seed corn, uh, generally less than, than most uh, growers are applying, uh, but uh, I think we're depending a lot on the uh, cover crops to uh, produce and, and uh, recycle uh, nutrients. I uh, feel that that's our way of uh, making it more sustainable and improving the, the soils. Uh, we do use a uh, strip till for uh, either strip till or no-till on, on all our acres, which is also an attempt to reduce our uh, footprint. I guess that in a nutshell is kind of what we're doing. Thank you. I'm John Burke. I farm here in Bay City, Michigan. We're in the Saginaw Valley. Uh, we farm 2,500 acres of cash crops, which include uh, white wheat, soybeans, corn, and sugar beets. We do a lot of cover crops. For instance, like when this sugar beet field is harvested, they'll come in and we'll spread rye. And we'll just disc grip it in. The reason we disc grip is we have a lot of heavy clay loam soils here. And there's a lot of compaction, especially after the heavy machinery hauling these sugar beets out of the field. So we're worried about compaction, so we're trying to bust that up. But at the same time, we're trying to add organic matter back into the soil and trying to loosen that top layer up a little bit. With our white wheat, when we get the wheat off, we come in and we'll spread an oilseed radish. And there, we're not using the typical tillage radish. We're trying to use a variety that's um, resistant to, or helps with the resistance of nematodes because we have a lot of nematode problems here with the sugar beets and we also are developing some nematode um, issues with our soybeans as well so we're trying to maintain four and five year rotations with our sugar beets to help with the soil health but also at the same time to minimize our disease and our nematode pressures uh, we use a lot of filter strips and what I mean by that is we plant grass barriers along our drainage ditches to try and help keep the uh, sediment and our pesticides and our fertilizer from washing into the drainage ditch. Plus the drain commissioners seem to like that when they don't have to come out and clean our ditches all the time because it helps prevent that soil from washing away. I'm also working with Dr. Dale Much and we're trying to look at different cover crop species that we can use up here in the Saginaw Valley following a wheat or maybe a pickle crop. However, we don't grow pickles but there are a lot of pickles that are grown in this area. Uh, sustainability is a big issue here on our farm the last five ten years we've been looking at the different types of cover crops we can use uh, manufactured fertilizers are great but they're not going to improve your soil health or your soil till we've been also using a lot of conservation practices on the farm where we leave a lot of like straw mulch on top from the wheat or like after our corn is harvested we'll either leave it lay and no-till soybeans into it or most of the time we'll just go through and chisel plow it or use one of these disc rippers to try and leave as much of the uh, residue from the past crop on top of the soil to help eliminate a lot of the erosion plus it helps to uh, maintain the moisture in the soil when we plant in the spring. Some of the other improvements we've made is we've narrowed our row spacing up for our corn and our soybeans. Our soybeans are planted in 15 to 20 inch rows and our corn is standard in 20 inch rows now. The sugar beet crop we have not changed yet. We're still in 30 inch rows. It's just a fact that with the size of the equipment, our heavy clay soils, the narrow rows would be hard to harvest when we have a lot of muddy conditions. Mark 
Kleinschmidt has a 380-acre organic farm dedicated to livestock and machinery. In 1971, when Kleinschmidt started farming, he began to transition from a commodity livestock grain farm, one that sold milk, pork, and grain fat and beef, to one that grows organic grains, supports a small 30-head grass-fed beef herd, and grass fattens about 120 head of yearlings a year. All the grassland acres on the farm were crop fields at one time, but now they are in a recovery phase, in grass to grow cattle and rebuild the soil carbon reserves. Currently, the milk barn is vacant and used for sorting cattle, and the hog barn is storage and in the process of being renovated for a solar array factory. Kleinschmidt is retired and mentors a young farmer in organic production and grass management. The mentee rents the 190-acre pasture as well as 125 acres of organic grain, while Kleinschmidt controls 80 acres of pasture and has low-line Angus and Murray Gray cattle. So I'm Jim Laubach and uh, we're uh, here in the morning on a Friday. The farm is uh, it's a relatively small farm. We have about 25 acres of Montmorency tart cherries and, uh, and about an acre of sweet cherries. And uh, we've been, these were all planted in the uh, early 80s. And, uh, and uh, we, we've been farming them since. We have uh, Kalkaska Sands, which I think has been renamed, but anyway, we'll call them Kalkaska Sands. So if you know a little bit about soils, you know these are very sandy, porous soils. And so we've uh, installed irrigation from day one, and uh, we still maintain the systems, although they're, they're older trees, but we still maintain them and, and feel that we get uh, good use out of that. Uh, myself and my family have quite a few woodlots in the, in, along this road and in the area. and. Um, uh, the wood is, is not great quality, so a lot of it gets chipped, and I mix those with, um, one of the things we do to kind of build up the soil is uh, we, we mix that with uh, turkey litter and, and kind of compost it um, for a year or two, and then we spread that on the orchards. We seem to be having more extremes um, in this area, and I know all over the United States. Around March 10th, we had two feet of snow fall in six hours and a heavy wet snow and we really had a lot of damage to the orchards. Now that's not, uh, that was an unusual occurrence but what was even more unusual as we all know within probably 10 days of that storm we were in the 80s and um, and, ha and spring started in, in mid-March and that um, certainly impacted uh, this farm as well as all the other farm fruit farms up here in that we uh, we we had accelerated bud development and then a series of frosts that took pretty much all of Montmorency tart cherries um, in the area certainly on my farm and uh, and really devastated our um, our other fruit crops as well on this farm um, we had um, no fruit and that's um, that's uh, kind of unusual. Um, certainly, um, we feel that in the last five years we've had we've started having these um, these extremes. My name is John Caveney. I'm a farmer from Central Illinois. This uh, farm is located in Piatt County. Uh, we have basically 35 acres of ground that we purchased in 1987 and then we rent another 20 or so acres. Uh, this farm is really a grass farm. Uh, we're in the business of turning grass into cash and we do that a couple different ways. We, we raise cool season grasses on this farm for animal feed and we raise the warm season grass, Miscanthus giganus, which you can see in the background, for a uh, renewable energy grass for baseload energy, uh, as well as a, a great perennial grass to sequester carbon. Uh, the enterprises on this farm are uh, bourbon red heritage turkeys, uh, Rwan ducks, uh, American buff geese, Katahdin sheep, and then we have managed to make this uh, farm into a, a, an actual production center, whether it's a profit center yet is still to be determined for uh, growing the energy grass Miscanthus. So we started out in 2002 with a couple grants from the Illinois Department of Agriculture and Department of Commerce and uh, Community Affairs in conjunction with the um, 
uh, University of Illinois Department of ACES to assess the availability of growing miscanthus as an energy crop or a third crop for Illinois. And so at that time we uh, established a mother bed, which is now the oldest um, miscanthus on-farm research plot in the United States. Uh, from that, we planted this track back here, and this track has now become the base of uh, miscanthus for the MFA oil company BCAP area miscanthus plots in um, Pennsylvania, Ohio, uh, Arkansas, and Missouri.